Hello everyone, so in this video we are going to solve a question of fleet code. There is number of matching subsequences. So let's start with the problem statement. Given a string s and an array of its strings words, written the number of words that is a subsequence of s. So basically in this question we have given a string s and an array of words. So in this we need to find out the number of words which are the subsequence of a string s. Right, so let's quickly understand with the first example. Let me just copy this first example from here and let's come here. So in this we have a string. We just wait. Yeah, it's fine now. So in this we have a string and an array of words, right? Now what we need to do is we need to count the number of words from this, right? We need to count the number of words from this which are the subsequence of this string right so there are two approaches to solve this question and we will be discussing both the approach in this video right so let's first start with the brute force approach so in the brute force approach what we do we first take each word right we first take each word let's say we start with the first word from here right so when we take the first word so we have a here and we have this string right that is a b c d e right this is the string and this is the word so what we will do we will be approaching this through a two pointer so what we can do is we can place a pointer here and a pointer here and we will start matching the characters so in this this a and a both are matched so we will just increment this and this will go out of the string. It means this word is a subsequence of the S string, right? So this we can consider this as one of our count, right? Now let's see for B and B. So for B and B, let's say we have B and B and we have this string that is A, B, C, D, and e right so what we do we keep two pointers first one is here and second one is here right now we will check whether they both are equal or not they are not equal we will just move this pointer to b right now they both are equal so we will move both the pointers this will come here and this will come to the second b right then we will check whether c and b are equal or not they are not equal we will just move this pointer Again we will check they are not equal, we will move this pointer and again we will check they are not equal so here we are going out of the bond. So if we are going out of the string it means these both are not the subsequences. So this is not a possible count. right? Now let's see for this string. So what we can say is whenever these characters, right, these characters are equal then we will be incrementing both the pointers. Right, we will be incrementing both the pointers else we will be only incrementing this pointer right this pointer of the s string let's see for the acd so for acd we have a c and d and we have s is equal to a b c d and e right so for this let's check these are equal right so let's move this to next pointers now C and B are not equal. Let's move B only. Now we have C here. So for C they both are equal. Let's move both the pointers. So we are here at D. Now D and D are equal. Let's move both the pointers and we come here. Now this is out of the bond. So whenever this word, right, whenever this word is going out of bond, it means all the characters are in this subsequence, right? So in this case, we will be counting this as a possible count. So this is also a possible count. Now let's see for A, C, E, E. So let's write A, C and E and also take A, B, C, D and E. Right? So let's keep two pointers here. A, A, it's matching. Let's move both the pointers. C and B, they are not matching. Let's move the down one. C and C are matching. Let's move both the pointer. Now 
see now e and d are not matching let's move d pointer to e and is both are matching and this goes out of the bond it means this is a subsequence let's count this as a possible count so till now we got three count one two and three right so in this case we will be returning three as our answer right so this is the brute force approach and it is basically depends on the concept of two pointer so let's calculate a time complexity of this so the time complexity for this is the size of this string because we are iterating through this string right so the size of this string let's consider size as s right multiplied by the size of this string right so let's count this as l and also the size of this word because we are iterating through each word so the size of word is equal to w so the time complexity would be s into l into w right so to optimize this approach we can use a binary search because we are basically searching for a single word in the each case right we are just searching for each word in the s string so we can easily do this through a binary search approach because in the binary search we can easily search the character in log of n right we can easily search the character in log of n so this will reduce to like this s will reduce to log of s right this will reduce to log of s so let's quickly understand that approach so let me just take this to here all right so let's see the second approach and let's take the second example here so let me just copy it from here and paste it here right so in the second approach let's first take a map so in that map we will be hashing the values of the index of each character in the string right so let's first do this so the index of each character is for d it's equal to 0 for s is equal to 1 for a equal to 2 for h is equal to 3 for j equal to 4 p equal to 5 for j is equal to 6 for a equal to 7 for u equal to 8 for f equal to 9 right now let's store this into a map so in the map we will be storing the character first as a key right we will be storing the character as a key and a vector of integer to store the indexes so this will be vector of integer right so let's store the values here so for d we have value as 0 so let's store 0 here right now for s we have 1 let's store 1 here for a we have 2 let's store 2 here for h we have 3 let's store 3 here for j we have 4 let's store 4 here for p we have value equal to 5 let's store 5 here now we have j for j you already have a key so let's store 6 here now for a we have 7 let's store 7 here now for u we have 8 let's store u and 8 here right now for f we have 5 let's store f and 5 right so we have just completed the hashing of the first string right now let's find out how many subsequences from this word array are there in this string right so let's quickly see the first word so in the first word we have a h j p j a and u right so for each word what we will do we will use a binary search here right we will use a binary search to search the index of each word in this vector right so this can be done in log of n right because it's a binary search so and also this is sorted right in each case this vectors are sorted that's why we can use a binary search here because we are just pushing back the indexes from left to right it means they are already in the ascending order 
that's why we are using a binary search here right so let's quickly see for the first character the first character is a let's see the index of a the index of a is equal to 2 so let's put 2 here right so now the condition for subsequence is they must be in the sequence it means the index of a must be less than the index of j similarly the index of h must be greater than the index of a right so what we will check in each case we will just check whether the index of this h is greater than the index of a or not right so let's see the index of h is equal to 3 so it's greater so it's fine we can consider this let's see for the j for j we have 4 so let's put 4 here and it is greater than h so it's fine now let's see for p for p we have 5 it's fine now let's see, see for j for j we have 6 let's put 6 here now we have a for a we have 7 let's put 7 here right now for u for u we have 8 let's put 8 here right so you can observe that this is an increasing order right the indexes are in increasing order it means it is a subsequence so if there is a might be the possibility that this might not be the increasing order so then in that case we won't be considering this as a subsequence but in this case this order is in the ascending order it means this is a valid subsequent so we will be considering this as a possible count right now let's see for the second case the second case is j and a right so let's see this is j and a right for j and a let's see the index of j is equal to 4 and for a we have 7 this is also increasing it means we can consider this as a possible subsequence let's count this now let's see for this one for a h b w z g q n u k right this is a subsequence now let's see for a it is 2 it's fine for h we have 3 it's fine now for b right for b we don't have any index here because b is not present in the string it means this cannot be a subsequence let's not take this right now let's see for the next one for the next one we have first character as t but t is not present here it means we cannot take this right so the possible answer for this is is equal to 2 right so b will be running 2 in this case so this is the optimized approach to solve this question and the time complexity for this approach would be big O of the number of words that is let's count this as w the number of words into the length of this word let's say the average length is equal to m so let's take this as m into log of log of the length of this right so let's take log of l so this is the time complexity for this and the space complexity would be big o of l right so because we are just storing this here in this map right so i hope both the approaches are clear to you and we will be just coding up this approach right the optimized approach so let's move to the coding part so in the coding part let's first initialize this map so let's take an ordered map of characters and vector of integers right and let's name it m and let's store 26 here because we are storing 26 characters at max right so let's find out to initialize it with 26 so let's initialize it with 26 right so now let's store these indexes here right let's store these indexes here so for this lesson of for loop for int i equal to 0 i should be less than as dot size and i plus plus right now let's store this into this 
map so m as of i dot push back i right this will be storing all the characters here now let's run a for loop for all words right so before that let's take an integer in answer which will be storing all the possible counts so let's run the for loop to check for each word so for auto w words right now for each word we will be checking for each character right so to, to check for the each character let's run a for loop here for int i is equal to 0 i should be less than w dot size and i plus plus right now let's see and also take a previous a previous variable here because we are storing the previous value here right we are showing a previous value because the next value must be greater than the previous value if it is not then it's not a valid subsequent that's why we need to store this previous count here so for that let's take a previous integer int previous let's initialize it with minus one because minus one is not a valid index so we can initialize it with any value right which is less than zero so we are storing minus one initially now let's see so for this let's check um, let's take int and let's take index which will be storing the index of or we can say the finding the index of this character through a binary search so let's take int index upper bound and we will be searching this into the vector of this map right so the vector of this map would be m w of i dot begin and m w of i dot end and this value right this index value must be greater than this previous one so let's write previous here and let's subtract this with the begin right so let's just write it here m w of i dot begin right so this will give us the index now let's check if this one right if this index is equal equal to the size of this vector right if it is equal equal to the size of the vector it means it means we are going out of the bond right we are going out of the bonds in this case it is not a valid subsequence so let's return from here so we will just break the loop so let's write m w of i dot size this will be storing the size and for this we will just break so let's break it from here else definitely we will be having a index so for that let's store it into the previous one so previous of m w of i index and let's also check if this i is equal equal to w dot size minus one it means we are at the last character and that last character is also satisfying the condition it means it is a valid subsequence so we will be just incrementing the answer right so let's see if i is equal equal to w dot size minus one it means this is satisfying so let's increment answer here and let's return the answer from all right let's try to run this yeah it's running fine let's submit this yeah it's working fine so the time complexity we already discussed is this one and the space complexity is this all right so i hope the approach and solution is clear to you if you still have any doubt in this question feel free to comment it down please like this video and subscribe to our channel i will see you in the next video